Okay, can you okay. pop up the bag with that little stick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it pop oh, up. Fuck. Check it at biting. Back up, back up. No, back up. Okay. Okay, the stick. Just any stick? Just need patience. Bite, bite, bite. It's tiring out as well. That's what it's all about, folks. Barefoot snakes there. Barefoot. <laughs> That would coral snake catch. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do this at home. <laughs> Look at that blue. Oh, you gorgeous thing. No, it's not. It's in the bag. Yeah. He's out. He's out. He's out. Yeah, let's problem solve, Jim. Yeah. Make it on the See? No, no, yeah, pull it on top. Just calm down. Make the bag deep, so like there's a void in there. That's it. Nicely done, brother. Let's see if she's gonna accept the structure we've built for her. Yeah. Bite, bite, bite. Yes. <laughs> Is that? I don't know whose that is. It's probably from a leech. Yeah. Oh, it could be from me. I got fucking apes. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, so that was probably the toughest catch of a snake I've ever done. And it was literally at the moment where we thought, cool, this isn't really good habitat. I'm not getting the, the snake tingle because we're in a little bit of a rubber plantation. It's less natural habitat. We're all barefoot <laughs> walking through the rainforest at night. Daytime's a bit different. You can, uh, you can kind of see where you're walking. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> points in case <laughs> and um, yeah we're walking back home after we decided okay let's head back to the river spotted the snake just on the path um, so yeah hike with shoes on dude hike with shoes what on what snake is it? it's a Malayan coral snake I need to check the scientific name but it's got bright red head red underbelly blue on the back and then a red tail and uh, yeah Jesus I'm ready to go to bed now I've got a headache <laughs> Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today we're in the Lucia ecosystem in North Sumatra and last night we went for some herping and we ended up finding this absolutely majestic snake. And this is Calliophis bavrigata flaviceps, the Malayan blue coral snake. And what a specimen it is. This is on the larger scale of this snake. They average about 1.2 meters to about 1.8. I would put this guy between the two at around 1.4 1.5 meters completely stretched out and what an incredible snake it is. They're very fast moving alert snakes like most of the lapids. See a quick tag there on the tongue and really not a snake to get tagged by. They are found in majority primary forests from elevations of 100 meters up to 1,500 meters uh, and in as well as secondary forests that are well maintained like the ones we've been working on here on the expedition in a lush forest. Absolutely beautiful snake, probably one of the most stunning snakes out there and for a reason. Bright colorations in nature generally depicts venom. Leave me alone, I'm toxic, I will kill you. Now you also get a lot of mimic snakes that do a copy of this and they want to pretend that they're venomous. So if you ever see color in a, in a snake or in an animal and you don't know what it is, assume it's venomous and leave it alone and observe it from a distance. These are the tropical coral snake species, not like your coral snakes in Central and South America, which have your banding. This is a different genus and different family. It's got this beautiful blue coloration on the top of its body that runs down the sides. It's got these two lateral lines that run here, blue on this side, blue on the other side. And the bright red belly underneath, which is absolutely stunning. 
So, the Malayan blue coral snake possesses an extremely deadly venom. The reason their venom is so ridiculously potent is because the Malayan blue coral snake specializes in preying on other venomous snakes, such as spitting cobras and young king cobras, meaning that if their venom was any weaker, they would open themselves up to the possibility of dying when trying to overcome venomous prey items. So the blue coral snakes have evolved a type of venom that causes their prey to instantly freeze with muscle spasms. Paralyzing their prey in this manner allows them to take control of the situation, which is pretty important if you spend your days hunting venomous snakes. Their blazingly fast venom doesn't kill immediately though. Instead, it turns on all the nerve endings in their fast moving prey at one time, almost instantly resulting in a frozen state. The Malayan coral snake venom possesses a toxin called caliotoxin, as well as presynaptic and postsynaptic neurotoxins. Caliotoxins work by attacking the prey sodium channels, the pathways that turn the nerves on and off. So the snake venom caliotoxin turns these channels on and keeps them on, causing paralysis to take over the body by frying the nervous system. This is the first time a snake has shown to use this strategy which is more similar to the venom of cone snails and scorpions. There's no anti-venom for this snake, so getting bitten by a snake like this, you're in big, big trouble. And where they occur, which is in primary and secondary forests, you're generally far away from medical help. They call this the 100, 100 pace snake. Getting bitten by a snake like this, you take a couple steps, 100 steps or so, and you can fall over from the paralysis and then you won't have any help. Jamie, one of the crew members at a lush forest expedition, found this guy last night just cruising off the path. So again, that's the danger walking around at night, uh, barefoot like a lot of locals do, without a torch, and that's where the problem comes in. You accidentally step on a snake like this and you're in big, big trouble. But a lot of the guys have said that they have local muti and local medicines. They use the forest to be able to heal themselves so really not a snake to be messed with or to play with like I am. Don't try this at home. I have been doing this for over 10, 15 years and it's all about reading the snake and understanding how it works. They're not out to get you. No snake is out to get you. They just want to get away and 90% of the time just trying to defend themselves. But an absolutely incredible snake. I still can't get over the beauty of this animal. Even in the sun, it's got this beautiful iridescence on its skin. Uh, iridescence is when light refracts off the skin and gives off other sorts of colors that are usually invisible to the human eye. And wow, just unbelievable. You can see how she's calming down a little bit. And it's a real privilege to be able to work with a snake like this. Very, very uncommon to see. So the habits of this snake is primarily nocturnal. Uh, they're a terrestrial, semi-fossorial snake. They'll cruise through the leaf litter looking for other snakes which they primarily feed on or lizards, geckos and birds occasionally. They're fossorial. Fossorial means living slightly underground so these guys will cruise through the leaf litter at a very slow pace using that tongue which picks up particles in the air. They pull it back into their mouth which touches into the Jacobson's organ which is an organ that detects particles and these guys like we hear in stereo, they smell in stereo. That's why they got a forked tongue. So they smell, pick up, the particles are stronger on the left and the right and they'll go more left and they'll go more right and eventually hone down on their prey. They've got one of the longest venom glands in the, in the snake kingdom, up to one third of their body length. So on that note guys, we have the blue Malayan coral snake. Absolute privilege to be able to see this snake here in the wild. And I hope you guys liked this video. If you liked this video, please do hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell, and remember to stand for what we stand on. So guys, what amazing experience working with that beautiful Malay and blue coral snake. But we're heading off to our guide's village. So I'm gonna release the snake here back in the undergrowth back to where she came from.